Uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Uh, brothers and sisters in Islam, I welcome you all to this month's virtual lecture organized by the seal of Prophet Hudith Vanguard for the month of January 2021. Um, before we proceed, I would like to spell out the agenda for the day. Our agenda will start by an opening prayer, which will be carried out by our able vice president in person of Dr. Abbas Radu, to be followed by recitation from the Noble Quran by one of us, our graphics guru, Al Hafiz, to be followed by introduction and citation of the speaker, which will be done by the moderator. The presentation by the speaker will be followed by question and answer session. Then at the end, there will be vote of thanks and a closing prayer. Um, on that is, I would like to crave our indulgence to do justice to our audio. Please let's enable to mute our audio, all of us. Please only unmute your audio when there is needs to speak. When there is no need for you to speak, please keep your audio mute. And uh, for the benefit of the question and answer session, our question should be typed in the chat box. Any question you have should be typed in the chat box. Please let's enable to reduce any form of inter uh, any form of that is going on. Is any form of obstruction should be avoided. Any question you have or observation, you can type in the chat box. It should be responded to you immediately, inshallah. Without much, wasting much of our time, I would like to call on Dr. Abbas to give us the opening prayer. Assalamu alaikum. This is Dr. Abbas online. You can go ahead with the opening prayer. Bismillah, walhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala habibillah, muhandub muhammadul mustafa bin abdullah, wa ala ali wa sahbi wa man wala, ila yum yakum al nasu amamullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Uh, we are welcome to this seminar. We pray that Almighty Allah will guide us throughout our outing. May He guide our speaker and guide all of us and accept this as an act of ibadah from us. Amen. Allah. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Are you doing the prayer? Alaikum assalam. I'm having some networking. 
Are you done with the prayer? We can hear you loud and clear. Okay, Alhamdulillah. Are you done with the prayer? والخاتم لما سبق الناس بالحج بالحق والهادي الناس المستقيم وعلى آله حق قدره ومقداره العظيم. I'm done with the prayer. نعم. May Allah accept the prayer. Amen. Um, while while the prayer is going on, I notice the presence of our speaker, the person of Dr. Mujahid Hamza Shitu. So you are welcome to our mix. Yeah, welcome to the month of January webinar for the youth for the seal of prophet through the youth Bangat. We are happy to have you in our mix. Thank you, sir. You are Thank welcome. you so much. Thank yeah. you, sir. Um, yeah, I can notice um, the, the, the next item on the agenda is the citation of the Holy Quran, which was supposed to be carried out by Al Hafiz. Um, I can see he is not online. I would like to ask for the permission of the president to call on our. I would like to ask for, for the permission of the our able president to call on any person available online to give us the recitation of the Holy Quran. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Well, in the absence of uh, the person who was uh, earlier on assigned or rather appointed to recite the Holy Quran, I I would have called on the our able secretary to recite, but unfortunately he is on transit, so I will throw the 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 rope to the house now anybody who could just grab it will be the one to to recite for us so back to the house please assalamu alaikum assalamu alaikum alaikum assalam we can hear you loud and clear just wait for the boss and I will pick the opportunity. Okay. Yeah, I can see the, the secretary is speaking. Mr. Secretary, you can recite the Holy Quran, please. Yes. Assalamu alaikum. Where I am is a little okay. bit too noisy. But then let me just okay. use the privilege to recite two or three verses. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Waja'alna al-layla wa'n-nahara ayatayn. Famahawna ayata al-layli waja'alna ayah. Waja'alna ayatan nahari mubasiratan litabtahu Litabtahu fadlam min rabbikum Wa lita'lamu adada s-sinina wal-hisab Wa kulla shay'in fassalnahu tafsila وَكُلَّ إِنْسَانٍ أَلْزَمْنَاهُ طَائِرَهُ فِي عُنُقِهِ وَنُخْرِجُ لَهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ كِتَابًا يَلْقَاهُ مَنْ اقرأ كتابك كفى بنفسك اليوم عليك حسيبا من اهتدى فإنما يهتدي لنفسي ومن ضل فإنما يضل عليها ولا تزر وازرة وزر أخرى وما كنا معلبين حتى نبعث رسولا صدق الله العظيم 
صدق الله العظيم وبلغ مولانا رسول الله الكريم thank you very much mr sabo ibrahim hassan that's our able secretary with the recitation of the holy quran the next item on the agenda is introduction and citation of the speaker um brothers and sisters is islam our speaker today is one of the kind that we always have in this room he is one of those speakers that are worthy of the topic that is being assigned to him from his profile it is clear that he will do justice to this very topic of discussion for today islam the image of islam in 21st century challenges and solution let's take a walk through the profile of the presenter today you can see that he graduated from the prestigious university of jos with ba in islamic studies from 1999 to 2003 apologies to mr president what are uh, you saying um, the citation of the speaker but i think i found a more rich profile on the speaker on academicroom.com so i'll be taking what i saw what i see uh, rather on academicroom.com um he is a graduate from the university of jos with a ba in islamic studies from 1999 to 2003 from there he got his masters from the same university from 2006 to 2009 our speaker proceeded to usman donfodio university where he got his phd in islamic studies from 2010 to 2004 our speaker today started his teaching career with ubaru musa radwa university from there he is currently at federal university gusa um about his publication you believe me when i say that our speaker can do more than justice to this topic because his presentations his publications are clear i can see a lot of them uncountable all i can why well, place my eyes on after 10 of day 13 and each of them is related to the topic of discussion for today the first was his work in 2009 together with one she to in uh, she to mujahid hamza and salama to hassan title entrepreneurship a viable economic engagement for women in islamic framework and the second on the list is islamic perspective on privatization the regulation of public enterprises in nigeria the rasat islamia by annual journal was the publisher it was done in 2009 Dama Diko Bature and Mujahid Hamza Shitu Orientalism and Studies of of Stud and Studies of Hadith the rebuttal of some mis- representations it was done in July 2009 the notion of scientific exegesis of the Quran in modern Islamic thought the appraisal of the appraisal Uh, the publisher was the marina international journal it was also in 2009 december to be precise an anatomy of interreligious dialogue in nigeria in sm janu and rapel m can we do proceedings of national conference on religious experiences in multi-religious states this work was done from 18 to 22nd of October 2010 Islamic perspective on female child rights and child marriage human rights in Islam proceedings of conference religious and cultural at the chief office royal embassy of Saudi Arabia Abuja in collaboration with Amadi Bello University Zaria national conference on human rights and Islam and Islam 30 July 2010 Poverty alleviation in Nigeria and Islamic alternative. This work was in 2011. Review of Idda al-Bayina fi Hukmi al-Inhina in the At-Tahiyya. It was published by Dirasa Tahiyya Muqarina Al-Hikma Journal 
of Islamic Studies 2010. Brothers and sisters in Islam, the publications are so many. I'm just trying to uh, make it uh, just give us a summary of the, of the publications. Uh, let me take the last two. Uh, a Dimension of Christian Missionaries, the Presentation of Islamic Philosophy, the Chinese Philosophy of the Muslims World. Uh, authors and principal beams, a Bar Journal of Arabic and Islamic Studies in 2013. And the last on the list is in Interreligious Dialogue as part of the syllabi of Islamic <laughs> Studies in Nigeria University. It's a course designed for seedings of international conference on Arabic studies and Islamic civilization. The ISBN number 9789671176849, of March 2014. Um, to summarize it all, that's the list of publications by our speaker. And um, I'm sure we are all eager to hear from him. But I'm also sure that the speaker is ever ready to start with the presentation. Have fun. Have fun. Alaikum. Um, Please, if the, IT, if the IT guy can help us to mute some of the participants, their background is too noisy. That would help, please. I think I'm doing that, man. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Yes, Doctor, the state is set for you to deliver your presentation. Thank you so much. I would like to meet Alim Minister Kwanja Rabin. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Kama salli ala Ibrahim wa ala Ali Ibrahim. Inna khamilun majid. صلاة تفتح لنا بها أبواب الرضا والتيسير وتغلق بأن أبواب الشر والتعسير وتقول لنا بها وليا ونسيرا أنت ولينا فنعم المولى ونعم النسير اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد الفاتح لما أقول لك الفاتح لما سبق ناصر الحق بالحق والهدي إلى صراط المستقيم وعلى آله وقفل له المبدع العظيم صلاة تنجنا بها من دري إلى أغار والأفات وتقضي لنا بها جميع الحاجات وتطهرنا بها من جميع السيئات وترفعنا بها على الدرجات وتبلغنا بها اقصى الغايات من جميع الخيرات في الحياه وبعد الممات اما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته وعليكم السلام ورحمه الله وبركاته My presentation is about the image of Islam in the 21st century. Traditionally, I don't make presentations outside the academia. It is very rare. Though as an academic, someone must carry the town and the gown together. But I seldom 
make presentations outside the academia. So I will try much in this presentation or in this discussion not to be too academic. And I would like to thank firstly our Sheikh and Imam Saleh Yunus Saleh, who prevailed upon me to make this presentation. I cannot decline his orders because we have been together for a very, very long time. And I have much reverence for him as a sheikh and a spiritual leader. I will also want to thank all the members of this great group and movement. May Allah continue to strengthen all of us. May Allah bless our families, our respective states, and the country in general. I thank the presenter who did the citation. I think Jack Saleh is right. Because I can remember, ideally, I ought to graduate in 2003. But due to ASU strike, the graduation was extended to 2014. But ideally, the year of graduation should be 2000. It is academic, the academic year is 2003-2004 session. Now, without wasting much of our time, let me begin to speak to us about the main topic. And I must confess to you all that the topic is strongly related with the goals and objectives of this great movement. This is so because the movement is about the passing of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Khatim al -Anbiya. All issues of Islam are related to the Prophet. The image of Islam, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam controls, the person of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam represents the image of Islam. Now, when we say the image of Islam in the 21st century, what do we really mean? Linguistically, an image of something is the impression that an individual organization or a product gives to the public. How does the public see something? How does the public see an individual or a product? In the context of this discussion, of this presentation, it is the image of Islam. How do the outsiders, what impression do they have about Islam? We must all agree with each other that in the 19th, 20th, and in the 21st century, that Islam is facing a serious challenge of distortion of image, despite 
the growth of Islam. Islam is adjudged as the fastest growing religion in the world. Despite the negative coverage, media coverage of Islam, especially in the Western world, people still learn about Islam and appreciate Islam. However, it is pertinent to state that we cannot deny that the image that is being projected for Islam in many situations contains much negativities. in the media, in the mainstream media, and the new media. Islam is the only religion in the world that the crime of individuals are ascribed to the religion instead to the perpetrators of the crime themselves. I can give you many examples of that. In just a few years ago, a young man perpetrated a crime of killing many Muslims in the mosque because of his hatred for Islam, that was in, uh, uh, is it Switzerland? No, it's not Switzerland. Um, the city that the, the crime occurred was called Chrisland in, um, I cannot recall the, the name of the country, but I'll come back to that when I remember. Now, Muslims were killed in an horrific way. Nobody ascribed his crime to his religion. However, whenever a Muslim does something, the first thing the media will do is to attribute his crime to Islam. Therefore, in the Western world, a term that is so popular in the Western world is Islamophobia. That is the phobia for Islam, the fear of Islam. And this is being instilled into the mind of non-Muslims for them to detest Islam and to have negative thoughts about it. My business in this discussion with you is to have a survey of the causes of this negative projection of Islam. It is important to state that this negative projection of Islam is rooted in two factors. The first one is the, the external factors. And the second one is the internal. The external factor of the negative projection of Islam in different parts of the world, especially in the Western world, can be attributed to many factors. 
it is important to know that Islam is the only religion that questions the authenticity of Christianity, seeks to correct the mistakes that are inherent in the religion. And Islam is the only religion that has displaced Christianity from its original stronghold. Now, let me go through the historical, through the history of how Islam was able to do that. Firstly, we all know that the cradle of Christianity and Islam and all other Abrahamic faiths is in the Middle East, where Islam itself began. After the establishment of Islam, and after the demise of the Prophet Islam was able to spread beyond the Arabian Peninsula. It spread to Syria and Palestine, though it, had, it has reached Iraq before then, during the time of Umar ibn al-Khattab, radiallahu anhu. All these territories were, apart from Iraq, which was under the Persian Empire, all other places were under the colonialism of the Byzantine Empire, that is the Roman Empire. Islam displaced Christianity in Syria, Palestine, and in North Africa. and took, Islam took over Palestine, which Christendom believe to be their holy land. Though it is, we share the same. In Islam, Jerusalem is also the third holiest place in Islam. Islam was able to take over all these places and the Islamic Empire expanded throughout the North, Af North of Africa and went into Europe, up to Spain. And Spain itself became an Islamic Empire. The Islamic Empire also stretched eastward and took over the eastern capital of the Roman Empire, which is Constantinople. Al Qastantinia, it became part of the Islamic Empire. So this led is, is, is a serious factor that led to the Western animosity towards Islam. It is pertinent to say that in the Middle uh, in the Middle Ages. The West was in the Dark Age. But the darkness was only in Europe. The Muslim world had advanced at that time and controlled sciences. The Abbasid Caliphate promoted science just the way the Umayyad candidates before it had promoted science. 
However, in Europe, scientists and philosophers were persecuted. This led them Yeah. 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 Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa sheikh. Tafadil. Okay, may I continue? Yes, you can. Please. Yes. Yes, you okay. can. Please, let's mute our audio, all of us, please. Please, let's mute our audio, all of us, please. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. So all branches of knowledge and sciences were Arabicized. At that time in the Middle East, the, the Western world had no source for scientific knowledge. They therefore began to they therefore began to seek for scientific knowledge in the Muslim world. And Arabic language became the vehicle for scientific advancement at a particular time. After that, the Muslim world, the Muslim scientists had dominated the whole world. That at that time, Muslims in Europe, when you are a Muslim, you are equated with a scientist. And many people were attracted to Muslims and Islam that even Christians began to learn the language of the Muslims, an aspect of Islam. This led the church to be envious of Islam, and that subsequently led to the launch of the Crusades. The Crusades were wars which was launched against the Muslim world. And the crusades were carried out for almost two to three centuries at different times. These crusades were launched by Pope Urban II. He proclaimed it around 10, uh, 1095 AC with the zeal of winning back the holy lands of the Christians. At the beginning, they were able to take over places such as Lebanon and Jerusalem. At that time, the Muslim world, the, 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 the Abbasid Caliphate had become very, very weak. Therefore, they were unable to resist the Crusaders. However, as time goes on, Salahuddin al Ayyubi, Yusuf bin Ayyub, who is known as Saladin in the, in the West, was able to defeat the Crusaders. And he had an overwhelming success over, over the Crusaders. That military 
engagement of the armies of Salah, Salahuddin became an object of depiction of horrible image about Islam by the West. And from that time, there were hundreds of written works which depicted Muslims as horrible barbarians. And it continued from the age of the Crusades. But after the defeat of the Crusades, the Western world sought for other means, true peaceful means of winning over the Muslim world. And what was done was that they began to send emissaries and missionaries into the Muslim world to study Islam and see how Islam can be defeated. And that missionary enterprise of that time led to the birth of what we call Orientalism in the 19th century. I don't want to be too academic, but I think I need to explain what Orientalism means. Ori Orientalism is a Western tradition, which is academic and artistic, aimed at studying the culture, traditions, languages of the people of the Oriental world by people from the Occident. That is the study of the East by non-Easterners, specifically by the Western world. There emerged many Oriental associations, which were specialized in the study of the Orient. However, in the study of the Orient world, the study of the Muslim world in particular was different. It was, and it's continuously to be studied with the prejudice of antagonism. Therefore, whenever they produce works, academic works or artistic works about Islam, you always find them to be full of prejudices of antagonism. Whenever they study other traditions of the East, like that of Buddhism or Hinduism or Confucianism, you find them to be sometimes balanced. But when it comes to Islam, they treat Islam differently. A scholar was saying that the way the Western world treats Islam in its academic and artistic works is like a cockroach, which is brought before a chicken. And that chicken is its judge. So you can see that the, 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 uh, the cockroach can never get justice from the chicken. Therefore, that is the treatment that the Western world often gives to Islam. 
in the modern world, it has gone beyond that. Artistic works like cartoons are done to project negative image of Islam, to portray the Prophet وسلم, in a negative form and to provoke the Muslims. These are the major issues of the Western world. However, there are other issues in which the West uses to, to project the image of a negative image for Islam, which includes different themes. Uh, for those who have been watching American films in the past, you always find that they project a very, very negative image of Islam. They project Muslims as barbarians and always want to tell the world that these are the teachings of Islam. This is not only in the Western world, you can still find the same thing in the, uh, within in Africa and in Nigeria in particular. Our mainstream media ascribes crimes by individual to Islam. I can cite examples of the crimes of Hatsmen, Hatsmen, who some of them are professional, some of them are criminals, let, let me put it that way, who engage in crime for their own economic gain. And their activities were not sanctioned by their religion, and they do not claim that. But in many cases, you find the mainstream Nigerian press proclaiming th that as an action sanctioned by Islam. In Nigeria, we have many non-Muslims that are specialists on Islam, who do that to project negative image of Islam. And these people, have produced thousands of literature just to distort the pristine image of Islam. Though many Muslims do not read their works, but I can authoritatively tell you that these works are widespread among non-Muslims in Nigeria. All these are done to project a negative image of Islam. In Nigeria currently, we have not less than 20 centers. We have not less than 20 centers of Christian study of Islam. And these centers have continuously produced specialized literatures to project and spread distortions about Islam. I will not want to delve into that because of time. I want to be mindful of time because my time is getting, the, the, the minutes that have been given to me is getting close to my end. Yes, doctor, you have five minutes to round off. Yes, and 
I have not mm. even done one over four of what I want to say this evening. Um, but now uh, I think we are going to debate uh, uh, adding, adding extra minutes to you, sir. <laughs> like five extra minutes. So okay, you have 10 minutes to mm. Okay, let me work harder to take the other part, the internal factors. That distort the pristine, pristine image of Islam. It is important to know that those outside Islam who always want to depict Islam in a negative manner have Muslims who support and give them means to amplify the negative projection they are making for Islam. We must all acknowledge that among Muslims, we have violent groups at global and local levels. These people claim that their heinous and violent, violent activities were sanctioned by Almighty Allah. The Takfir organizations will have different Takfir movements. In the present time, The, the leading Tekfiri organization is Wahhabism. And the jihadi groups, the group, the jihadi groups in court, all claim affinity to Wahhabism. And they emanated from Wahhabism. And these organizations have been. These organizations have been perpetrating different crimes in the name of Islam. They engage in suicide bombing, kidnapping, and extra judicial extermination of lives. And they do claim that all these are uh, in the name of Islam. They have their authorities who justify their actions and give backing, ideological backing to their activities. These people aid the Western world to project a negative image for Islam. When they conduct their activities, the, uh, the world media, which is controlled by the West, will immediately tell the whole world that this is Islam. Whereas the other man that went into the, the mosque in Christland and killed Muslims, his activities were not attributed to his own faith. These security organizations believe that anybody that does not share the same ideology with them is an infidel. And even if such person is a Muslim, and that that person can be killed, we have examples of it, where people in the mosque are being attacked and killed, and many other heinous acts. You see people claiming affinity to Islam, kidnapping girls, raping them, 
in the name of religion. And this is what the West wants. Therefore, the Western media will amplify that to spread very negative and distorting image of Islam. This gives the du'at of Islam in different parts of the world much challenges and difficulties to make people understand Islam, except for those whom God has blessed with the understanding by opening up their minds to the truth. Therefore, as part of this discussion or presentation, it is important that we look into finding solution to this problem of negative projection of the image of Islam by the people after outside the fold of Islam. How can we do this? Firstly, there must be unity among the Muslims. Many people may think it is very, very difficult to unite the Muslims because from a very long period of time, of, of, of time after the demise of the prophets, there have been crises and divisions within Islam. But despite that, unity is still achievable to an extent when Muslims respect each other and try to understand each other. Another important thing is that Muslims must be law-abiding wherever they are. Muslims should not embrace violence, even when they are being provoked to do so. Recently, the case, uh, there was the issue of blasphemy in France which led to a violent reaction by some Muslims. And this led to the amplification of the crisis. The Muslims must be strategic not to ask, accept provocation by following legal means of solving problems. And that cannot be done until they are well organized. Until the Muslims are well organized wherever they are. We should not be taking the law into our hands. The issue of blasphemy that happened in Cameroon some months ago. I strongly disagree with those who attacked the families of the, the blasphemer and even the blasphemer himself. I think the constituted authority should do the right thing and laws should not be taken into, we should not take the laws into, the, into our hands and we should always respect the constituted authority. Now, another issue is the issue of knowledge. The, the first thing that was spread by the Prophet Sallallahu was knowledge. We must spread knowledge in the Muslim world. 
in our societies. Muslims must embrace science and technology. Religious education must be widely spread among Muslims so that they will have deeper understanding of Islam and know that we must always respect the constituted authority and that Muslims are peacemakers. I will like to say something about Sheikh Ibrahim Inyas, he was able to win many people into the fold of Islam. He was never violent about it. In fact, he said it himself that I want the religion to succeed. And I do not want warfare. Because the Prophet did not engage in any, he did not engage in warfare for, did not engage in offensive warfare, but all the, the battles of the forest Wasallam were for self-defense. And that can be done only by a constituted authority. Individuals are not permitted in Islam to take arms against the state or to take laws into their hands. So we should all know that Islam can only succeed through peaceful teaching. Another issue is that Islam, we are all ambassadors of Islam, and Islam must be seen in all our activities so that we will be able to show the beauty of Islam to the people outside the fold of Islam. With this, I will stop here, and I thank you for the opportunity given, and Inshallah, in future, I will do more. Thank you so much. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Doctor, thank you very much. That was a wonderful presentation. And um, this presentation is impactful, it's educative, and we are all your students today. Uh, as you said, you don't want to be more of academic, but to me, being academic really helps a lot because we understand exactly the point you are trying to raise. Uh, Jazakallahu khairan. Uh, we have a couple of questions for you to answer. Um, we have a couple of questions for you to answer, and um, we will assign okay. two minutes per question for us to make it uh, on schedule. Uh, the first question is by oh, our okay. able president, Salihu Yunus Asali. Okay. The question goes as thus, okay. looking at the multidimensional and socio-economic crisis in the world, can we say that Orientalism still exists? If it does, to what extent? That's the question. Okay, thank you so much. I will tell you that Orientalism still exists. Because there are still centers in the West that are dedicated to the study of the Muslim world. Most Western universities have centers for the study of Islam, and they have continuously produced specialized literature on Islam. And these centers influence the thoughts of the Westerners 
about Islam. When you listen to Western media, like the BBC, the CNN, and others, you see that bringing Westerners that are experts on Middle Eastern studies and Islam to make analysis of the activities and political issues in the Muslim world. After that, in most seminaries of the world, you find centers for the study of Islam and the Muslim world. Let me just give you an example. The Pope has the a center for Islamic studies. Pontifical, the name of you can you can Google it now, the Pontifical Institute for Arabic and Islamic Studies. The Pontifical Institute of Arabic and Islamic Studies, which is there for the study of Islam and to project the image of Islam, the way it suits the papacy. Thank you. I hope I've answered this question. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. The question is well answered. Thank you so much. Uh, the next question, uh, the second and the third question are similar, so I will join them together. The first is by Salu Yunusa, okay. Hussein Salu, and the, next, the, the, the third okay. is by Muhammad Zulureini, who happens to be our project coordinator. Um, okay. The first question reads, most okay. of the terrorists that are terrorizing the world today claim to be Muslims. Why is it that? And the third question, why is it that most of the terrorist groups are from the Wahhabi school of thought? Can we say that they are an offshoot of them? Okay. Yeah, that's the first. Okay. 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 Uh, thank you so much. Um, you see, the term terrorism in its modern usage. And other terms such as fundamentalism, um, extremism, all these Western coined terminologies are used to refer to Muslim in the present time. You, you, you often hear in, in the media, you hear people talking about, they call some people Islamists, telling you that they are jihadis and terrorists. They equate all these terms together, are equated to refer to the Muslims. Your question, goes right into the discussion we have made. In the present world, the issue, the, 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 the most, uh, most of the terrorist organizations are from the Wahhabi school of thought, or from what they call Salafism. It is pertinent that we state that Salafism is classified by scholars into many categories. The major one are three. The quietest, who these quietest are educational. The second group is the political, and the third one is the jihadist. 
The first group do not engage in violence, though the jihadists and the political among them claim still uphold them as their authorities in, because they find evidences to their violent activities from Salafi scholars. Though you still find that the Salafis or the Wahhabis try in most cases to dissociate themselves from the violent group. Even if the groups emanated from them, as you have said, they are their offshoots. In Nigeria recently, we have a violent group which is perpetrating terrorism, killing people. And we all know the origin of this group and what its, me its members spread and the teaching, the teachings they uphold and their scholarly authorities. Thank you so much. I think I have answered this question a little. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum, doctor. Um, the last question on the list is what's the salam. way nam, what's the way out of serious sectarian crisis rocking Muslims today? That's the last question. Sir. What's the way out of the serious sectarian crisis rocking Muslims today? Okay. Um, it is important we mention that the sectarian crisis rocking the, the Muslim world can only be solved. Though I believe it cannot be totally solved, can be minimized when we try, the leaders of the Muslim world should be sincere. Because religion is sincerity. Adinu and Nasiha. Religion is sincerity. They must be sincere and shun politicizing Islam. Most Muslim countries do not agree with each other. Not because their religion is different, but because of political issues and the claim of being most implied sincerity among ourselves. And the Muslim world must come together. It has been done in the past, in the 60s, when formed. Jackie Banyas was one of the people, he was one of the people who started the rabbit of al Islam. Why did he do that? He did that to create unity among the Muslims. So the Muslim world must go into soul, searching into their own souls and must understand that the crisis in the Muslim world cannot be solved without uniting. We must shun 
Takfir. Takfir is a major issue. It's the major problem. The Wahhabis believe that the non-Wahhabis non are all infidels. This is their belief system. And they are not, they do not tolerate others. Even when their own perception of Islam is wrong, they do not accommodate others and they easily label people as infidels. So they, they are a stumbling block to the achievement of unity among Muslims. Another issue we should all note is that we must spread the knowledge of cleansing the heart, which is the glow, which is a major goal of Sufism. That we must seek to purify our souls. When a soul is being purified, it becomes cleansed and evil will be far away from it. May Allah bless us all. Fidunia wal akhirah. Thank you so much. Doctor, thank you so much. This is indeed a Alaykum very educative presentation. We are all happy to have you. We hope to see you soon in our mix. I'm sure this topic is not exhausted. So we'll have to call on you some other time to come out of where you stop. Inshallah. Thank you so much, Doctor. Um, the next item on our agenda is both of plans, which is going to be delivered by our able secretary. Or every secretary, you have five minutes to deliver your board of thanks. Thank you. <clears throat> well, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. I don't think he's, uh, the secretary is within reach because, as I informed you earlier, he was uh, he is still on the transit, and I don't think he has um, reached his destination. I think the the uh, the moderator may just call on any other uh, person to give us the the vote of thanks. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah. Vote of thanks was initially was initially supposed to be delivered by the president. So in the absence of the secretary, please permit me to call on the president to deliver the vote of thanks. Thank you. So so what I what I earlier <laughs> ran away from is still is still trailing me. Anyway, uh assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillahi awalan wa akhira wa wa salatu wa salamu ala al mabuthi rahmatalil alameen. Sayyidina Muhammadin Khairi Khalkillah wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in amma ba'd assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh so today is a is a fun field is a fun field day to me because um how happy i am to see my my sheikh my elder brother my teacher and of course my friend and mentor you know in person of um dr mujahid uh, hamza shitu uh to see him you know delivering lecture on what he knows and masters and experiences best which is islam dr mujahid hamza shitu is a guru and of course he's a versatile scholar in anything islam so i i think we have made a very very good choice by bringing him to the table to come and i uh, give us this astonishingly academic lecture even though he said um he didn't want to go too academic, but I think if he was to use references, I think we would have had like, like 10, 20 to 30 references now. So thank you so much for the Khairan. Doctor, I remember how how hard, how hard I struggled to, to get you, you know, find this time for us. 
as I may inform the house, the doctor was in Casina yesterday. So you remember he has been on transit throughout this week and I've been disturbing him. Please find time for us. So he was able to get back to his uh, destination, which is Yobe yesterday. And the treasurer, when you were, I mean, the moderator, when you were uh, uh, given the citation of, uh, of the doctor, you mistakenly you know, uh, uh, captured his work of place as uh, Gusau, Federal University Gusau. So that was um, a little mistake as he is now working with, he's now a senior, a senior lecturer with uh, Fu, Fu, uh, Fuga, Federal University Geshwa. I, I think I have not made another mistake, Doctor, permit me. So thank you so much, Dr. Mujahid, my friend and brother. It's very, very nice to see your first live from far away. Yobe, Jazakallah khairan. Uh, let me use this opportunity to, 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 say, to say what I once had uh, about Sheikh, uh, Sheikh Hassan Sise, Rahimahullah, wa radiallahu an, uh, uh, president, the then president of America in person of George W. Bush, um, Genio. He once look, looked at Sheikh's face and said, if all Muslims would behave like you, there would no need to manufacture any gun or any weapon at all because you are a true example of a peaceful Islam. So I think if we are to imitate and emulate the way our shuyukh lived and still live, I think Islam in general will be, uh, will be better and Muslims will be addressed as, uh, you know, the best, the best uh, people in the world. Uh, when, 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 when doctor was given recommendations, there is one particular thing that really, really, uh, you know, captured my, my, my attention. He said that we must always re respect constituted, constituted authorities and that Muslims are peacemakers. This reminds me of um, whenever there is any, um, you know, national maulud of Sheikh Ibrahim Iyas, Khalifa Tul Am, then Khalifa Tul Am, Sheikh Ahmad Tijani, radiallahu anhu, rahimahullah, he would always admonish all the Tijaniya adherents traveling to wherever the maulud was taking place. He would say, please, wherever you meet any checkpoint of any, you know, constituted authority, and it be it military, be it um, police or anybody mounting roadblocks on the road, please stop, explain, and respect them. Don't say that because you are traveling, or you are going to attend Maulud, you will drive recklessly or you will, meet, you will misbehave on the road. No. Remember that the person you are going to witness his Maulud was once adjudged as the best, best practicing you know, Muslim in the Black American, um, you know, region. And we have all seen through his abiyat in the one, in the one, just like doctor said, Uridu uh, Nasra, Ola Uridu Qitala, I've forgotten the complete bait from the one. Jazakallah khairan, doctor. May I use this opportunity to thank all that have, you know, uh, endeavor to attend. We know we all have tight schedules, but due to the importance of this uh, great lecture, we all spare time uh, to be here. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all. Uh, let me use this opportunity to, 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 to again appreciate and show our gratitude to the one and only moderator uh, in person of um, uh, Sayyid Muhammad al Bashir, Muhammad al Bashir Ghali Ahmad, Jazakallah khairan for this uh, wonderful uh, you know, presentation to our IT specialist who has been online, uh, you know, uh, right from time, I think since before four, who was able to launch the, you know, the, the, to, to host the, the program, Jazakallah Khairan, the project coordinators, the vice president who gave us the, the vice president who gave us the opening prayer, Jazakallah Khairan, Dr. Despite your test, your test schedules, you are able to be here. Uh, Jazakallah khairan, Malang Abbas, and all that have you know endeavored to attend. I use this opportunity to say Jazakallah khairan. And let me quickly remind all of you that uh, the, this this particular you know session of the program and all other sessions that we have had before are live on you know YouTube. Whenever you visit our YouTube channel, they will be there. So Inshallah, Dr. Mujahid.
be, be, be well informed that this will be launched on our YouTube channel. And inshallah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, we hope to, uh, you know, subsequently invite you to come and give us more and more and more. Um, um, in the absence of uh, any other thing, let me use this opportunity to, to say one or two words of um, of prayer to Fatiha the Salat al let us recite the party. The background is noisy. Please mute. You need to you need to mute those noisy backgrounds, please. Let us recite Ayatul Kursi like a ja akum dali ilafi. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. Let us recite Alam Nashrah inna anzalna and Ida Ja. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and assist us in all our endeavors. ونزل الملائكة وروح فيها بإذن ربي فاتي عما صلاة الفاتي once more for ourselves so background is still very noisy please IT specialist moderator may you kindly unmute everybody please Allahumma salli Salatan taftahu lana biha abwa wa rida wa taisiri wa tugliku biha anna abwa wa sharri wa taasiri wa tukum lana biha wa liya wa nasiran anta maulana fa ni'ma al maulani wa nasir Allahumma inna ka aminu min kulli shayin wa kulli shayin khaifu mink fa bi amnika min kulli shayin wa khawmi kulli shayin mink aminna wa maana khafu wa nahfaru ya latif قل دف بنا في أمورنا كلها كما تحب أرضنا في دنيانا وآخرتنا ستار أسترنا بسترك الذي سترد بي على ذاتك فلا عين يراك ولا يد تسوي لك يا رحمة رحمين يا رب العالمين يا حي يا قيوم يا من كل ما ناداه مضطر أجاب دعاه أكشف قلوب المسلمين جميعهم وأجد فمن بفضلك يا هو ربي كثير رحمة وأنت خير رحمين وتب علينا يا مولانا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم سبحان ربي كرب العزة إما يسفو Salam al-Musalim alhamdulillah rabbil alamin. Thank you so much, Mr. President. This brings us to an end of this session. If a date with us next month, inshallah, it will become the date and time will be communicated to you. We'll be coming up with a fresh topic. As the president said, our presentation is live on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram. Just search the seal of prophethood. The presentation is live on Facebook, Twitter. Instagram, YouTube. Just keep a date with us. You can view this and many other presentations before this. Jazakumullah for Khairan. Thank you so much. We are happy to see your face. And we look forward to seeing you again. Thank you so much. Salaamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Bulitu bihum bil musdafa al-khatmi ahmada bil kawni wal akhla kifar an wa mahtida. ثاني هواه قبل أن أعرف الهوى سليت بنير عن اشتياق يا أحمد ألقت به والناس في سنة الكراء تمتعت منه الدحر إذ كنت مفرضا وزهيت في هذا الزمان وإنني لفي ذرة من يروم محمدا ولكنني جليت قبل سباقه وقد ملت تبريزا قرون لأحمد ولملا وإز العبد إز مليكه فلو يمين الكون أبدا مسودا ألا يا رسول الله فرفع شفايتي إليك وحالي ما ترى العبد سودا 
Haji wa haji muslimina ahaltu alayka fatubtu lam sahura musarmada Samaniya talqul wajhu gaira mukajarin Aruhu wa abdu daima lam ukamada Uqadi sabuhan inda afdal mursalin Wa man bi rasulillahi lam yashjal mada Ya wallah rasulillahi amri falam yasalim Saidu idahri fasilitu min ajada Wa inna atila al-mustafa ayni kimia فقد سار أزب ما أمنه تعودا ولا نبعير كان صعبا وأين أج نخيل بآم بغره سار مزبدا وأوتق سلمان بشوك حديدنا ولا تتناهى ملأت المجلدا لأن اللزيم لأنبياء من خوارج به نال حل أقوام خيرا محشدا زاك كرامات لأهل الولاية وأهل الولاية وأهل الولاية يا بر يا كافي بجاه مدينة يفتنس حيدا ما يروم وترشدا يا عم كفى أنا وقفنا الدهر سيدي جميع الشرور قد قضيت وأيدا ومد صفاتي من صفاتك سرمدا وكمل لي أرفاني وإني وسددا وتبصرني والمنتهين بنزبنا مناهج الحج حق الدهر وأبدا وتحبيني نحج رشادي أهل رشادي أهل التقى والحوز جندم جندا صلاة وتسليم على من سمد به صلى الله عليه وسلم أو السادة والأهل أحمد حقا تبليهم كده يا لازم أو عليك جزاك الله خيرا سيد بشير السلام عليكم ورحمة الله